uh, very good evening to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us again today evening for the special media briefing during the visit of uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi to the United States of America. Um, as you know, he arrived here on the 22nd, and today was effectively the second day of his detailed engagements uh, in uh, Washington. Uh, to give us a sense of the important meetings that happened today, we have the privilege here of having with us uh, Foreign Secretary Sri Harshwatan Shringla, uh, our Ambassador to the United States of America, Sri Tarinji Singh Sandhu, as well as uh, Mrs. Vani Rao, Joint Secretary of the America's Division in New Delhi. Um, as always, I would uh, request uh, Sir, Sir Foreign Secretary Sir to say um, a few words to give an uh, outline of what exactly happened, and then we'll take some questions. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Arindam. Namaskar and good evening to all our friends. As you know, uh, today was the second substantive day of the Prime Minister's visit to the United States. Um, he had uh, his first bilateral meeting with uh, His Excellency Mr. Joseph R. Biden, President of the United States of America. Uh, Prime Minister also participated in the Quad Leaders Summit. Um, as you know, we had a virtual meeting of the Quad Leaders Summit uh, in March earlier this year. This is the first in-person meeting of this uh, group, um, along with uh, President Biden, who hosted the summit, but also Prime Minister Morrison, Scott <coughs> Morrison of Australia, Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga of Japan. Um, the Prime Minister will depart later this evening uh, for New York. Uh, tomorrow morning, he's scheduled to address uh, the 76th session of the UNGA. Uh, he'll be the first speaker uh, in tomorrow's uh, session. Yesterday, uh, as I had conveyed earlier, uh, the Prime Minister had uh, met uh, the Vice President of the United States, uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, he also had bilateral meetings with uh, the Prime Minister of Japan, Prime Minister of Australia, and uh, met separately uh, a number of uh, US uh, CEOs of uh, major corporations. Uh, in the meeting uh, with President Biden, as I said, this is their first in-person bilateral meeting since President Biden assumed uh, the presidency. Uh, it was a meeting which was characterized by warmth, cordiality. It was both uh, productive and timely. Um, the leaders uh, on a broad plane acknowledge that the comprehensive global strategic partnership between the two countries was firmly anchored in a shared commitment to democratic values and common strategic interests. Um, the discussions were wide-ranging, but what was very evident was that the, the importance of both leaders placed on uh, <coughs> dealing and combating with uh, the COVID uh, crisis. Um, both leaders, uh, I think, uh, were able to brief each other on their experiences in dealing with COVID. Uh, <coughs> Prime Minister um, expressed uh, uh, thanks uh, uh, for the solidarity shown by the U.S. government uh, and people of the United States uh, when we had our second wave of the crisis, uh, the support we received at that time. Uh, President Biden appreciated India's role as a country that had extended assistance uh, to countries across the world, including through <coughs> pharmaceuticals and vaccines. Uh, he was also uh, very impressed with the um, whole of government approach and the steps taken by the government of India uh, to uh, deal with the second wave and the level of recovery and the swiftness of recovery was something that was commented on uh, very favorably uh, by President Biden. There was a discussion on vaccines. I think uh, President Biden uh, felt that uh, uh, he appreciated the decision of uh, the government of India to resume exports of vaccines from October. Uh, he himself, he said that the U.S. itself had uh, um, announced uh, significant increases in their own um, uh, efforts to uh, distribute vaccines. Uh, this also came up in the Quad, and I'll brief you about that as well. Uh, essentially, um, the uh, sense that uh, Indian vaccines, which were uh, of quality, which were affordable, which could also be scaled up significantly, uh, would uh, make a difference in terms of the availability of vaccines and dealing with vaccine inequity in the developing world in particular. I think there is a great appreciation there on those factors. Um, with regard to um, the 
issues that were discussed bilaterally. The Prime Minister raised a number of issues that involved uh, the Indian community. Uh, he uh, spoke of uh, the um, issue of getting access uh, for Indian professionals uh, to the United States. Uh, in that context, he mentioned the H-1B visa. Uh, he also spoke of the fact that uh, uh, many Indian professionals who worked here contribute to Social Security. Uh, the uh, return of those contributions when they leave the United States is something that uh, did, <coughs> uh, did affect a number of uh, people who, Indian nationals who worked here, and that he requested that this matter be looked into. Uh, there was a strong emphasis by the Prime Minister on the development of uh, trade and economic relations, and here I think uh, the uh, two uh, leaders felt that they should ask uh, their concerned uh, ministers, in our case the Commerce and Industry Minister, in the case of the United States, the U.S. Trade Representative, to see how to impart greater dynamism to the uh, trade relationship, uh, how to um, more speedily implement some of the decisions that would involve uh, further um, accelerating uh, the trade ties between uh, countries. Uh, there was also a discussion on the TRIPS waiver. There was appreciation of the U.S. decision to support uh, the initiative by India and South Africa to seek a waiver of uh, IPR on vaccines so that at the WTO, uh, so that uh, vaccines could be made more um, uh, widely available, uh, particularly in the developing world. Uh, this is something that President Biden also commented on. He said that he took the decision fairly early on in his presidency uh, and uh, that uh, he was uh, committed to that decision. Um, there was also discussion of India-US defense relationship. Uh, and uh, particularly uh, the uh, option of uh, uh, the two sides uh, looking at uh, practical new projects uh, that could uh, impart new momentum to the defense relationship. Uh, we are looking at certain areas of high technology. As you know, we are a major defense partner of the United States. Uh, we are working on operationalizing the four foundational agreements. Uh, the defense policy group is due to meet uh, shortly in Washington, the level of defense secretaries. We have uh, the chief of defense staff also visiting the United States. Uh, so there was, an F there was uh, a sense by the two leaders that there should be some thought given to how we can identify uh, important new projects, uh, high technology pro projects in the defense domain. Uh, there was some discussion on uh, our cooperation in the UN Security Council. Um, there was. Uh, appreciation of our presidency of the Council, in, in, especially on the issue of Afghanistan, uh, but also uh, on the overall cooperation that we have with the United States uh, in the UN in general and the Security Council in particular. President Biden uh, was, very sp uh, was very specific in stating that he felt that India should have a permanent seat in the UN Security Council. Um, and uh, I think when you see the joint statement also, this would be reflected appropriately. Um, the uh, both sides uh, felt that uh, India and the U.S. were natural partners based on democratic traditions. Um, there was uh, this was supposed to be a one-hour meeting, but it went on to something like 90 minutes. Uh, the discussion obviously was very comprehensive and wide-ranging, as I said. Uh, in fact, President Biden said it should have been a two-day exclusive India-U.S. summit. In other words, we needed much more time to discuss the many areas of our very, very multifaceted, comprehensive, in-depth relationship that the two countries today enjoy. Um, I don't know if you've seen uh, the joint statement. Uh, uh, it might not have reached you yet because we're waiting for final confirmations. I can, if you permit, briefly share with you some elements uh, so that you have them uh, in a, on a timely basis. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I think, there was, as I said, there was a welcome. There was uh, the U.S. side welcome our announcement that we would re resume as exports of uh, safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, there was, uh, we were finalizing what is called a Memorandum of Understanding on Health and Biomedical Sciences, very comprehensive document that provides for cooperation in the health sector across the board. Uh, and uh, it also uh, goes into areas like pandemic preparedness and biomedical research uh, to re reduce the risk of future pandemics. Um, there was a support for the Prime Minister's uh, uh, initiative to achieve domestic goal of installing 450 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030. Uh, I think uh, the U.S. side, uh, both sides, uh, uh, referred to the importance of mobilizing, mobilizing appropriate financing, uh, green technologies, uh, 
capacity building in uh, in that uh, regard. Um, uh, the Prime Minister had also some initiatives in the uh, area of uh, climate change and green energy, which was discussed at the Quad, but I'll come down to that uh, subsequently. Uh, President Biden reaffirmed the strength of the defense relationship and unwavering commitment uh, to India as a major defense partner. Uh, there was uh, uh, the two leaders welcomed the uh, uh, deepening of advanced industrial cooperation in the defense sector. Uh, there was emphasis, as I said, on co-development, co-production, and expanding uh, the uh, area of uh, uh, industrial cooperation in the defense sector. Um, the, uh, there, was, there's been, uh, there was, of course, uh, both sides agreed that uh, the issue of terrorism was very important. Um, obviously, uh, counterterrorism efforts and cooperation between the two countries would be given a lot of emphasis. In that context, uh, both sides denounced any use of terrorist proxies uh, and emphasized the importance of denying logistical, financial, or military support to terrorist groups, which could be used to plan uh, or launch terror attacks. Uh, that uh, they also noted that the uh, US, U.S. and India would be organizing a counterterrorism joint working group um, meeting, uh, a designations dialogue, and uh, there was also uh, going to be a renewed uh, U.S.-India homeland security dialogue in the areas of uh, law enforcement and security. Um, so um, on Afghanistan, of course, uh, there was a lot of uh, importance attached to uh, the uh, fact that, uh, that the uh, UN uh, Resolution 2593, as you recall, was uh, adopted under India's presidency of the Security Council, uh, an important resolution which reflected the international com community's uh, gener general view on, on the situation in Afghanistan and the obligations of the ruling dispensation there uh, to fulfill certain conditionalities uh, that uh, the international community felt were important. Uh, and so uh, the two sides uh, underscored the importance of combating terrorism in Afghanistan. Uh, they called on the Taliban to adhere to these and all of its commitments uh, under Resolution 2593. Uh, that includes, obviously, the issue of, uh, as I said, uh, ensuring that Afghan territory is not used uh, to threaten or attack any countries, to shelter or train terrorist groups, to plan or finance terrorist attacks, and underscored, as I said, the importance of combating terrorism in Afghanistan. It also um, called upon uh, the uh, respect to human rights of uh, women, children, minorities, uh, a provision of humanitarian assistance and uh, access to humanitarian uh, workers, and uh, of course uh, called upon uh, the two sides to secure an inclusive political negotiated settlement in Afghanistan. So this is an important point. I think the um, uh, fact that uh, the uh, government, uh, the current uh, dispensation uh, and the ruling dispensation uh, did not appear to be uh, an inclusive one that did not involve uh, the uh, ethnic minorities of Afghanistan to the extent that uh, that it should, uh, that it not, did not include uh, participation of women in the government and uh, uh, was, I think, uh, a point that was noted. Uh, it also, uh, I think, there was very careful uh, consideration by both sides on the support given to certain hardline elements in that country, including terrorist groups uh, by uh, certain neighbor of Afghanistan. I think there was, there was a, a clear concern expressed in that regard on Pakistan's role uh, in Afghanistan and uh, their continuing uh, support uh, for um, uh, a, a certain uh, approach that did not seem to be conducive to the international community's expectations of what uh, Afghanistan should be like, and as I mentioned, Resolution 20, 20, 2593 is the is the gauge by which uh, the international community would judge um, that uh, uh, situation in that country and developments uh, thereof. Um, as I mentioned, trade was an important factor. Trade and investment relations, uh, and um, and the areas of uh, technology, in particular, uh, space, cyber, health, etc., AI, 5G, 6G. Uh, cyberspace uh, vulnerabilities in cyberspace, and, and these are important things. Uh, you would have all um, seen uh, the remarks uh, that the Prime Minister makes. Uh, cyberspace uh, vulnerabilities in cyberspace, and, and these are important things. Uh, you would have all um, seen uh, the remarks uh, that the Prime Minister made when he first uh, met uh, President Biden. Uh, it, it's uh, from our perspective. Uh, <coughs> 
encapsulated uh, our approach to the relationship. I'll try and uh, walk you through some of what was already conveyed by the Prime Minister, who envisioned a decade of transformation, a transformational partnership in the U.S.-India relationship, uh, articulated by what he called, uh, uh, you know, emphasis on tradition, technology, trade, trusteeship, and talent. Uh, tradition being democratic traditions and values which both our countries enjoy, uh, technology being the most important driving force uh, in the world, but in particular in the U.S.-India relationship, uh, trade given the strong complementarities between Indian and U.S. markets, increasing bilateral trade was a priority. <laughs> Trusteeship was the instrument, uh, uh, instrumental in dealing with the emergent, emergent global challenges of climate change. Uh, trusteeship as in India, including what was espoused by Mahatma Gandhi himself, uh, for the planet was the way that we secure the future, for, uh, secure uh, the planet for our future generations. Uh, India believes, uh, has always believed in, in uh, a close link with nature <coughs> and living in harmony and compatibility with nature. So trusteeship of the world given to mankind is something that uh, was uh, uh, mentioned. And finally, talent. Uh, talent uh, which uh, uh, signifies a people-to-people -people linkage between our two countries, uh, which is uh, manifested by the contributions made by the Indian American community. Uh, and uh, I think the five T's in some senses summarize uh, our relationship. And I repeat, tradition, technology, trade, trusteeship, and talent. Uh, the uh, Prime Minister viewed uh, the India-U.S. Uh, India and the U.S., as I said, as national partners, endeavors to consolidate and strengthen our partnership of trust so that we can together make a difference. And, of course, uh, the fact that in, I think President Biden noted that India and the U.S. working on issues that were um, not only bilateral but regional and global in nature made a difference to the way uh, we can shape uh, the, uh, the world around us, uh, in, in, in particular our own region, the Indo-Pacific uh, region. Uh, let me come down uh, to the second uh, part of the day's uh, uh, meetings, which was uh, the Quad. Again, a very, very <coughs> important meeting. Uh, you are all aware uh, that this is the first in-person Quad summit that has taken place uh, with the, the leaders of all four countries present uh, with high-level delegations. Um, the meeting enabled the leaders to share views uh, on contemporary issues in the region. They shared perspectives on the situation in Afghanistan, emergent challenges in South Asia and the Indo-Pacific, reaffirmed their commitment to work together to contain uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and work towards uh, preventing uh, other pandemics that would come in the future, uh, evolving a common approach uh, to emerging technologies, cybersecurity and addressing uh, the challenge of uh, climate change uh, was something that the leaders uh, discussed. They took stock of uh, uh, the um, uh, factors that could address uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, in particular the vaccine partnership. This is considered the most important of the deliverables uh, that Quad is looking at, uh, most immediate and most imminent also from the point of view of the uh, concerns uh, with COVID-19. Uh, um, in, in that context, the Prime Minister announced uh, uh, not only the resumption of vac vaccines, but at the request of the Quad, uh, the Prime Minister said that India would make available 8 million doses of uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccines, which is the Janssen vaccine, which, as you know, is manufactured in India by Biological E. Uh, this would be made, uh, this would be ready by uh, the end of October. It would be compatible with our decision to export vaccines. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, uh, I think uh, uh, Quad will pay for the vaccines. Uh, India will, will provide a certain, uh, will, will, of course, uh, uh, bear a certain share of those, uh, but this is an immediate delivery from the Quad uh, in, into the Indo-Pacific region. And I think this uh, factor found a lot of resonance and, uh, uh, I would say, appreciation uh, by the Quad leaders. Uh, the, uh, I, what was also emphasized was that in order to ensure uh, that <coughs> India can continue to produ produce quality and affordable vaccines, not only for itself but for the rest of the world, it was important that the supply chains and the supply of raw materials for vaccine production was continued, and this is also something that I think uh, was uh, uh, discussed. Um, in uh, terms of climate change, of course, as I said, uh, um, Prime Minister uh, proposed uh, the concept of uh, 
a global uh, green hydrogen uh, initiative. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that would uh, require uh, um, the four countries to, to come together to take uh, fullest advantage of our renewable energy program, in particular solar energy that would be that would be necessary for the production of green hydrogen. We have already identified green corridors, including green ports in India, and uh, the idea is that we cooperate uh, to develop India as a hub of green hydrogen. Um, Australia did uh, also point out that uh, uh, there was uh, a lot of technology and expertise among the Quad countries uh, and that there was a need to look at uh, uh, the standards, setting standards, not only for green hydrogen but also the manufacture of green hydrogen. Um, the Prime Minister proposed uh, a common international travelling protocol that involved mutual recognition of uh, COVID-19 certification. Uh, this was, I think, well received uh, by President Biden and other, other Quad leaders as well. Uh, and I think um, it is something that, uh, as you're aware, India has, has uh, made that, taken that initiative and we will continue to uh, work with the Quad and the Indo-Pacific countries, other partners, in um, uh, pushing the idea of uh, mutual vaccine recognition that could uh, enable our people to travel um, uh, more freely. Uh, cyber security discussions in the in the group, uh, I think uh, this enabled uh, um, more discussion, collaborations, sharing information. Uh, Prime Minister highlighted India's uh, ongoing Digital India program, offered to make uh, India's uh, digital technologies available uh, to different parts of the world, um, and uh, and uh, with the Quad uh, supporting the efforts to uh, to provide uh, that uh, that uh, level of. Uh, uh, access uh, that other developing countries could get uh, to these platforms. Um, technology, uh, clean energy, uh, supply chain resilience was discussed. Uh, there is an important proposal from Australia in that regard and that was also something that uh, was uh, uh, discussed by the leaders. Uh, uh, at the coming back, sorry, to the bilateral meeting, uh, the Prime Minister did invite uh, President Biden to visit India. Uh, this is something that President Biden uh, um, uh, noted uh, with thanks and appreciation uh, and certainly um, we look forward to visit by the President of the United States uh, at the earliest uh, convenience, uh, at mutual convenience. Uh, from the point of view of the Quad uh, uh, statement, uh, I just will uh, probably flag a few points because you will get the statement in any case. Um, this is um, in terms of cooperation, I think uh, we are looking at uh, fairly uh, uh, strong language uh, with regard to the court's commitment on uh, terrorism and uh, the need to counter terrorism uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, it reinforces uh, the court's uh, thinking on this issue and the need uh, to um, uh, combine efforts to, to deal with this uh, common scourge. Uh, also, with regard to Afghanistan, again, uh, there is similar language, uh, in, in, in especially with, uh, with uh, uh, the main points of Resolution 2593, 295 uh, uh, mentioned therein. Uh, there is also uh, uh, reference to a Quad infrastructure partnership, which is uh, uh, something new, and the setting up of uh, uh, a working group that will go into some of the aspects of ensuring um, sustainable infrastructure development in the Indo-Pacific region. Um, the, um, in terms of people-to-people -people cooperation, there was a decision to uh, inaugurate what was called a Quad a Fellowship Program that would enable STEM students from uh, the four countries to, to study in each other's countries through a scholarship uh, fellowship program. Um, and, uh, of course, this would uh, uh, be sup strongly supported by all the four Quad countries. Um, there was also, um, yes, yeah, space I think was an important area of cooperation and, uh, and I think uh, the Quad countries, uh, all of whom have fairly developed space programs, uh, will uh, pool in resources and look at how to cooperate further in the space sector. Uh, so I think in all of this, uh, uh, you will of course find uh, a more detailed uh, 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 version of what was discussed and what was agreed upon, uh, what are the new initiatives, how do we look at uh, the next steps uh, both in the bilateral relationship and in the Quad in the joint statement uh, issued uh, uh, after the bilateral meeting between uh, Prime Minister and uh, uh, President Biden. 
uh, you will also have uh, the details of what was uh, discussed at the Quad, uh, at the Quad uh, joint statement, uh, uh, which will be issued soon, as well as what is called fact sheets, which give you some details on some of the areas of cooperation that we have uh, concluded. So maybe I'll mm, stop here, and uh, we'll see if there are any yeah. questions. <laughs> Uh, we are <coughs> sorry. We are actually on a very tight um, timeline since Prime Minister has to leave. So I'll I'll take the first round. Okay, I saw your hand first, but then I'll come back. Yeah, please, ma'am. Um, Mr. Foreign Secretary, <coughs> the comments from President Biden um, before the bilateral meeting on democracy were rather pointed, if I may say so. And I was wondering how uh, India looks at it. He says, uh, you know, shared responsibility um, to uphold democratic uh, values, commitment to diversity, family ties, etc. Then he, he again points to Mahatma Gandhi's birthday and just like uh, talks about non-violence, respect, tolerance. Do you think there's a message here? Uh, here, please. Uh, Once again, one by one. Palki, I yours. I'm Palki Sharma from Vion. Um, you spoke about the infrastructure partnership. Can you uh, detail uh, something on the scale and the scope of this, and is this in any way comparable to China's BRI, which uh, has pushed countries into debt? Also, is Quad going to have a military dimension? Uh, they did that behind you. Mr. Foreign Secretary Reena Bhardwaj from ANI, uh, was there any discussion on the over-the-horizon counter-terror strategy in Afghanistan between the two leaders in the bilateral? Uh, Yashwant Hindustan Times. Uh, FS, uh, you, re you mentioned uh, the discussions featured trade and uh, H-1B and totalization. Uh, uh, so uh, on trade, uh, was GST part of the discussion or have you given up on GST? We don't hear about GST anymore. GSP, G GSP. GSP. And, uh, and, and on H-1B and uh, the, the social security deductions, these have been long pending issues and we've talked about this for a long time. Uh, any assurances that uh, were given on, on these two issues? Uh, so I'll take the first round, first round last one here. And then so how much there was emphasis uh, on Pakistan, Pakistan support of terror, both during the bilateral meeting and the Quad meeting? Uh, secondly, on uh, uh, Quad, is it? Uh, it's not formalized. Will we see annual Quad summits happening? You are related to this. A corrected okay. question. Okay. How specific was the reference to Pakistan in the context of uh, uh, the situation, regional situation in Afghanistan, and particularly its connection with terror? Also, part B of the question: Was there any specific mention of China when uh, Quad meeting happened? Okay, I think we'll stop. stop. And that should keep us busy for a while. Uh, <laughs> question. Um, well, with regard to Seema's question, uh, I think uh, it's important to. <coughs> Keep in mind uh, that the Quad itself represents uh, like-minded countries with, with shared uh, values and principles. Uh, the most important of those uh, uh, represent is, is, rep is, is represented by the fact that uh, we are all uh, democracies, we are vibrant democracies. Uh, we are, uh, in many senses, senses um, um, whether it's large or old, but we have been at that process for some time. Uh, and I think like any other democracy, there is always room not only for self-improvement, but also room for, uh, for uh, working with other countries uh, on um, you know, uh, the uh, fact that uh, uh, working with other democracies across, across the globe. And I think Quad's uh, uh, real uh, focus is to um, see how we can work with other like-minded countries uh, in the Indo-Pacific region. So democracy is an important factor that binds us together, but it's also an important factor that uh, enables us to work with other demo democratic countries and uh, work within democratic frameworks. Um, so I would see the uh, President's uh, uh, remarks in that context that uh, we are all countries that have the, you know, the, the points you mentioned in terms of uh, uh, you know, shared uh, responsibilities, diversity, uh, family ties, emphasis to family ties, emphasis on non-violence, tolerance, respect uh, are those that uh, uh, we fully believe in. And in fact, India is ingrained in exactly those areas that you mentioned. So 
I would see it as a reaffirmation of our democracy, uh, a sense of the uh, fact that the in India and the United States represent two vibrant uh, dynamic democracies that are on the move. Um, um, Palki's question on the infrastructure um, initiative uh, of Quad, uh, I think this is uh, um, the uh, new uh, partnership that we're looking at, uh, uh, which would look at mapping the region's infrastructure needs, coordinating regional needs and opportunities, uh, providing technical assistance, empowering regional partners with evaluative tools, promoting sustainable infrastructure development. Uh, I think uh, the idea is to provide certain standards to ensure a certain level of transparency. Uh, I have to say that uh, you know the way we look at things, uh, it is not in comparison to any other uh, parameters that are there. Uh, I think the Quad is working on its own defined uh, objective of seeing a free, open, um, transparent, inclusive Indo-Pacific region. Uh, prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region is an important factor. Uh, towards achieving that objective, I think uh, an infrastructure a partnership is something that is uh, desirable. Uh, it would also, uh, it, uh, I think, uh, have the uh, support of many of our other partners in the Indo-Pacific. As I said, uh, we are working with many other partners. We see ASEAN as central to the Indo-Pacific uh, strategy of the Quad. And uh, I'm sure this infrastructure partnership is one that would be of not only of interest but of utility to many of uh, our partners and uh, friends and neighbors that we work with uh, in our neighborhood. Um, the, um, I think Rina had a question yeah. on uh, counter-terrorism strategy. I think I spent some time explaining about uh, some of the discussions uh, within Quad uh, on counter-terrorism. If you see both the joint statements which are bilateral as well as the one in the Quad, there is strong language on counter-terrorism. There is a strong emphasis uh, by all countries, uh, by all countries, I mean the Quad countries, but also in our bilateral relationship with the United States on the issue of counter-terrorism. This is an important issue, one of the most important issues that we are dealing with today, one of the most critical issues that uh, the Quad and uh, India and the United States are considering, and certainly uh, one that has found uh, ample amplification both in the discussions as well as in the outcomes of these discussions that are there. Uh, so yes, the answer is uh, yes, uh, uh, short answer to your question. Um, uh, Yashwant, uh, your uh, question was on trade uh, H1B fertilization. Um, I think, uh, again, a strong emphasis on seeing how we can push trade forward. Uh, as I said, uh, the two ministers have been tasked with looking at how to <coughs> energize uh, the trade uh, relationship. Uh, whether that is uh, what means that we can use and mechanisms that we can devise to do that is something that the ministers will look at. But uh, I think the direction of the two leaders is to look at how we can take that important trade relationship uh, forward. Uh, with regard to uh, GSP, I think the fact that we have a trade policy dialogue, we have several mechanisms on the trade front that will meet uh, and go into the details of the uh, trade and economic relationship uh, would mean that uh, certainly uh, many of the issues that you mentioned uh, would be discussed in greater detail. Uh, so that is not off the table. Uh, but uh, obviously uh, when you have uh, a meeting uh, of 90 minutes, you cannot go into each and every issue that is there. Uh, but uh, the, the larger, uh, I think, overriding uh, uh, sense was that um, all these aspects uh, would be uh, discussed in some detail. I don't know if the Ambassador wants to come in and say anything more on the trade part, uh, on the economic mm -hmm. side. Uh, Siddhant, you spoke about um, Pakistan's support to terrorism, um, whether the Quad, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether, of course, uh, and there was a supplementary question also on the, Af uh, the Afghanistan, Pakistan uh, uh, angle. I think, uh, again, I, I did go into a little bit on that. I think the uh, both in the bilateral relationship as well as uh, bilateral discussions as well as in the court discussions, there was a clear sense that a more careful um, uh, look and a more careful examination and monitoring of uh, Pakistan's role in Afghanistan, Pakistan's role uh, on the issue of terrorism uh, had to be, uh, had to be uh, uh, kept uh, and, uh, and that uh, uh, certainly, um, the, uh, whether it's the Quad or whether it's other partners had to keep uh, uh, a track of that factor. 
uh, an important factor which uh, sometimes gets overlooked uh, when you see Pakistan uh, uh, projecting itself as a facilitator, um, whereas uh, it has uh, really been in many senses an instigator of some of the uh, problems that uh, we are dealing with uh, in our neighborhood and beyond. Um, whether the Quad uh, would be formalized, whether there would be annual meetings, I think one thing is for certain we have had two uh, meetings of the Quad leaders. Uh, the uh, level of the Quad has been elevated to uh, the level of head of state and government. Uh, I think we will continue to meet uh, at all levels, but including the level of uh, the highest levels. So Quad has been elevated to the highest levels. I think you will see uh, uh, regular meetings uh, of the group. Uh, you will see more uh, activity and more, uh, I would say, pointed uh, uh, deliverables. Uh, if you see the vaccine area, the fact that we are already uh, talking about delivery of significant quantities of vaccines to the Indo-Pacific is, is a sign of delivery within a few months of the first Quad summit being held. That shows uh, that Quad is serious about what it's doing. It shows that uh, the members of Quad uh, have a certain focus uh, that, is, uh, that is very concentrated on outcomes, uh, that the leaders are committed to ensuring uh, that uh, Quad has a certain level of outreach to the Indo-Pacific region. And India, of course, uh, through its contribution uh, with uh, affordable, um, high-quality vaccines is at the center of that uh, delivery. Thank you. Yeah, sorry? My follow-up question is whether you have a military dynamic. Ah, right. Yeah. And whether China will specifically mention the import? Well, let me, tell, let me say that, uh, ask Palki a uh, counter question. I mean, in all of this, do you see a military dimension? Um, whether we are talking about the joint statement, about what I mentioned, uh, uh, an array of global initiatives uh, that are positive and proactive in, in nature, um, whether it is vaccine cooperation, climate ch change cooperation, cooperation in critical and uh, emerging technologies, infrastructure development, space cooperation, uh, I think uh, you, will, you will see that uh, it is uh, strongly loaded in, 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 in what the Prime Minister calls working for the common global good, uh, working for humanity. I think Quad's success lies in its ability to work with its partners in the Indo-Pacific region, with our ASEAN partners, other <laughs> friends and neighbors, in uh, ensuring that we work with them, we co-op them, we, we, we provide uh, options that are of utility to them. And I think that is the important uh, message of the court uh, as it stands. Um, we'll just have a few more questions. Yes, please. No, not a second round, please. Uh, yeah, right there. Thank you. Thank you for on the uh, microphone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just quickly. Just quickly. There's a new chapter in the history of India in the leadership. So, what has ended with this chapter? Which are the top, which is on top of this chapter? And secondly, sir, uh, on the violence that day, the Prime Minister spoke about his thoughts of documents, which proves that his relationship with the Prime Minister. So, can you have something to close? Sorry, I, I think you have to keep it close. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Last question, yeah. No, last question there, yeah, please. Uh. Sorry, uh, I, we just run out of time. I, I have, this is the last one. I, Sir, there was Mark a, yeah. from CNN News 18. Sir, trade is such an important component of uh, the India-US relationship, but uh, we haven't really heard much in the Biden tenure about the possibility of a trade deal. Has it been put completely on the back burner and why? Okay, so uh, very briefly because we, we are running out of time and there's a hard stop because Prime Minister has to leave for New York. Uh, of course, I think we, we are scheduling uh, another press interaction in New York. Uh, so, uh, if some of you are going to be there, um, you know, feel free to uh, ask your questions. Uh, uh, why is it a new chapter in the relationship? Is that it's it's an evolving relationship? It's a fast-moving relationship, uh, and it's a relationship. And you have heard that 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 you have heard